Welcome back, everyone, to the BNC. I'm your host here, as always, Alexis. And since the BNC is turning three years old, oh god, I'm getting old. So today I'm going to present to you my five favorite films of all time. These five films that I selected are the ones that have lasted with me, that I appreciate, cherish, and love the most. Films that I can watch again and again, and that symbolically represent my tastes in cinema. At number five, I have Captain America The Winter Soldier. This is a film that solidified my love for Marvel and earned a new layer of respect for that studio that I hadn't before. And at its core is a political thriller that obviously speaks to me as I am a political junkie. Watching this movie for the first time in theaters blew me away in ways I wasn't expecting. I have to tell you, I was watching the movie like this all the way in the front row, so it was kind of hard to sit, but the movie was that captivating, you didn't mind that your neck was breaking as you were watching it. It was truly a spectacle. The action in this film sets itself apart, not only from most Marvel movies, from, from most action movies in general. It is so captivating that it just sucks you in, and even when there isn't action on the screen, the political intrigue, the conspiracy theory element, and at the heart of this, you have Cap's inner struggle. The arc that they set up for him kind of represents my own arc if I were in a movie, but this is real life. But as someone who started off being very patriotic, believing in politics and the purity of it, and then being disillusioned, once you open your eyes and you see some of the stuff that you weren't aware of before. And so I relate a lot to him because of his very nostalgic personality, but also his identity and trying to find who he is and how to, how to compromise that with his moral compass. At number four, I have the third installment in the Toy Story franchise. This film captures the definition of nostalgia and unleashes it upon you in a way you never expected. Some people who are not sophisticated in nature um, believe that the last scene where Andy is giving away his toys is cheesy. Well, let's not mention these species. Am I throwing too much shade? <laughs> oh, shade. I throw shade where it's deserved. When Andy is giving all of his toys to Bonnie and he's going by every single one of them and introducing them by their names and playing with her, it's a scene that plays out and it's a scene that every time I watch it, I cry even longer if you even thought that was possible. It occurs to you just how much of your life was devoted, especially your early life, to toys and how much you believed in them and how that they were real. At number three, I have Steven Spielberg's Lincoln. One of the first movies I can recall as a young adult being completely fascinated by and obsessed over. The premise of Abraham Lincoln's final four months of life and how he was as a president instantly intrigued me. But it wasn't until I saw this movie that essentially became official that Abraham Lincoln, in my view, was the best president that this nation has had. The tour de force performance by Daniel Day-Lewis. He is Abraham Lincoln. There is no other living actor today that does what Daniel Day-Lewis does to a performance. I'm a big fan of biopics. And I'm sure many people are, but it's one of the first times I can remember watching this kind of movie where you're not watching somebody give a performance. It feels as if you're watching the real, living, breathing person in front of your eyes. Lincoln is a movie that to me really exemplifies what prestige is in cinema. And the decision for Spielberg to focus on Lincoln's last four months and having the story be about him passing the 13th Amendment that abolishes slavery is a story that everybody should know. And I think just on this note, this movie has a peculiar sense of familiarity. The political nature in that film is very toxic and I think it seriously mirrors kind of the environment that we are in at the moment. At number two, as you could have imagined, a Star Wars movie was gonna pop its way up in here somehow. And for me, I'm going to go with The Empire Strikes Back. It would have been Return of the Jedi, but recently, whenever I see Empire, and I've been watching Empire a lot lately, it's a movie that gets better and better and better. In my view, it is the best Star Wars film because it takes these great characters and fleshes them out. Every last one of them, you get to know a little bit better. Needless to say, obviously, with the great script, 
the directing by Irvin Kirshner and making this feel more like an actual actor's movie. Notice how the performances are above and beyond so much better than they were in the first movie. Obviously it has the classic I am your father scene. The parts of this movie that make me the most emotional are with Yoda. Watching him explain what the force is and that just sense of magic in the air and how he describes everything not only is it so poetic to what is happening right now at that moment in the Star Wars universe, but it is very symbolic of our lives in general. And my number one, that is Richard Linklater, Boyhood. Boyhood is a movie that instantly appealed to me. As you can tell from the other films on this list, I'm a very nostalgic person. This movie is a movie about nothing really, and yet it's a movie about everything. You start off the movie with Mason as a young boy, six years old, and you end the film at 18, graduated from high school and moving on to college. This film is a series of home videos put together over the course of 12 years. This movie actually took 12 years to make, which makes it even more authentic than it sounds. And there were so many moments watching it for the first time, thinking of what Mason was going through at this age or at that age or in this situation that spoke to me. And I think there's a little bit of something for everyone. They really captured moments in time when it came to when the last Star Wars movie came out or when a new Harry Potter book came out. They really captured events and moments that made up the early 2000 decade. That's the decade in which I grew up. When this movie came to an end, I sat here for two hours in complete silence, believe it or not, just thinking about every moment of my life that I can recall. And it just made me feel accomplished, but it also made me feel sad that a lot of those moments I can't go back and relive, that I miss a lot of the people that I had at that time. It's a movie that I like to say destroyed me emotionally because, I mean, you, you, you can't just see a movie, sit for two hours in complete silence and just say that movie had no impact on you. It, it hit me hard. That's when you can say, that is a true masterpiece. Anyway, those are my five favorite movies of all time. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching me just sit here and talk about movies these past three years. I'm very grateful for all of you who have bothered to watch and who take my commentary or my thoughts as something that you want to hear. It means a lot to me. And I'm sure it means a lot to every person on this channel. So thank you for watching this. I'm your host here as always, Alexis. This is the Barely News Crew, the place for all things movie news and reviews. And until next time, bye-bye.